Tom here, Flip Anything USA. So on my channel, I share how I made my fortune in real estate investing. I started at 19 years old, uh, made a million by the time I was 28, and that was a long time ago. Been doing the same thing ever since. I'm a big fan of Warren Buffett. I uh, invest in real estate like Warren invests in stocks. And what I mean by that is I don't swing at everything. In fact, I'm very picky. He's looking for value in his assets and value in his investments. He doesn't buy blue sky, neither do I. And uh, But I thought it'd be interesting to talk about Bitcoin and, and Warren Buffett. Uh, he, he he also looks at Bitcoin much the same way I do. It's junk. It's shit coin. I call it shit coin. Uh, but I kind of want to call it myth coin too after listening to Warren uh, because there's just nothing there. There's nothing there. But I think you're going to enjoy this. Uh, let's watch this together. CNBC did this on Warren Buffett and uh, basically Warren Buffett on Bitcoin has his opinion changed and uh, so you'll see <laughs> but uh, I, I already watched a little bit of it not all of it but I'll, I'll watch some of this with you it looks pretty cool I, I like I say I really uh, have a lot of respect for for uh, Mr. Buffett and uh, let's get rolling Bitcoin it, it's ingenious and blockchain is important but Bitcoin has no unique value at all. It doesn't produce anything. You stare at it all day and no little Bitcoins come out or anything like that. It's, it's, it is a, it's, it's a, it's a delusion, basically. <laughs> yeah. At one point this weekend, you said that Bitcoin, and this was basically, you were asked, Charlie said Bitcoin's like rat poison. You were asked about that comment and you said, well, it's probably more like uh, rat poison squared. Uh, Charlie went on in a meeting to then basically call Bitcoin turds. Um, he, he is an expressive sort, isn't he? <laughs> if, if anybody gets a little older, he'll mature. That's funny. I called it shitcoin, and uh, Charlie Munger refers to it as turds. Look, one thing Warren does is he, he buys stocks based on what they produce. In other words, when he buys it, it produces money. Uh, same with me. When I buy real estate, I only buy it if it's worth more. I always buy under market. It's the safest thing you can do. And things can still go down on, on a value of piece of real estate that I buy. And same with Warren. But we, me and Warren, we both have the same hedge. In other words, we're buying it under market. So even if things start to fall or go down, it still produces an income and or we can sell it because that's our hedge is that we're buying it below market. We, could, we, have, we have some space that we can get out of it and get our money back out if we need to. But uh, let's keep going. I may speed him up a little. You know what? I'm going to speed him up just a little bit. He doesn't talk. Oh, actually, we're at, we're at one and a half times speed. So he doesn't normally talk this fast, but it's, it's actually perfect, I think. We'll, we'll watch. <laughs> I just want to ask you about that because it sparked so much controversy, and uh, particularly on Twitter and some of the places where you might expect people who are trading in, in cryptocurrency uh, to be pretty um, loud yeah. about what they heard. What, what is it about Bitcoin that gets you guys so fired up? Well, when you buy a farm, uh, you look at the crop every year and and what prices are and decide whether it was a satisfactory investment. I mean, you, you look to the asset itself and what it produces for you. When we buy a business, we look at what the business earns and decide how we feel about it in terms of what we paid. But we are buying something that at the end of the period, we not only have what we bought in the first place, but we have something that the asset produced. And when you buy non-productive assets, uh, all you're counting on is whether the next person is going to pay you more because they're even more excited about another next person coming along. But th the asset itself is creating nothing. Uh, one of the interesting things, uh, for example, is, is gold. Uh, if you go back to the time of Christ and you look at how many hours of labor you had to give up in order to buy an ounce of gold and you take it forward to now, you'll, you'll find the compound, right? Maybe a tenth or two tenths of one percent. You know, and so think about that. Gold is a shit investment, too. I've never liked gold. And what he's talking about is that like, if you take it back to that, all the way back to Christ, how much has it gone up since then? And like he said, it's like a, a, a tenth of one percent. It's like it's so slow. It's nothing. With real estate, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, when, when I buy something, A, it's under market, and or if it's a, a an investment that brings in a return, like I own about 150,000 square feet of rentals. These are mostly commercial, industrial uh, type rentals. Okay, I have some houses, of course, too, but a lot of times the houses are speculative. Houses are kind of that blue sky thing, but neither one of them are hot potato like Bitcoin. Bitcoin, when you just when you can see the value goes from nothing to way the hell up there, then it goes back down. Why? Because there's nothing there. There's nothing there. It's just ones and zeros in a computer. It means nothing. And so think about that. What are you investing in? You're investing in nothing. Like he said, you're counting on the next sucker behind you to pay more for it than you did. It's kind of a, really, it's kind of like a, a bit of a, oh God, it's like a pyramid, right? You know, they used to have these pyramid schemes where, and people would go for it. 
And these guys were very clever. What they do is they say, yeah, put in $5,000. We put it out, and it'll come back $10,000. And they bring you back $10,000 on your five. But then what do you do? You throw back another 10, and then they come back and bring you 20. And then you go, I really want to make some money. And then you go grab a hundred grand and throw it out there, and that never comes back. So uh, this is much like Bitcoin. There's nothing there. It's like there, there's no reason for the value to go up. You know, every time I post a video, I get some dipshit comes in behind me and makes a comment on, oh, you know, Mr. So-and-so, uh, you know, is the, really helped me. I've made some money, you know, in vip, investing in cryptocurrency. And then, you know, immediately after this post comes under my comments, there's like 10 likes and it's all bullshit. And listen, if anybody was really making big money on Bitcoin, they wouldn't be trying to hustle others into it because believe me it's all the suckers that get into it that they drag into it that they're going to make money on and that's the little guys for sure you know look tesla uh, elon musk can go in there and throw a billion dollars and, and buy bitcoin it's peanuts it's not even his money he's he's taking money that is you know the corporate money he's taking the money's investing the money of the investors it's nothing it's, it's it's no skin off his back so don't get you know carried away with that but he also knows probably that there's a lot of suckers out there. I, I can't speak for Elon. I don't know what's in his heart. If he believes it, he, he believes in it. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, I'm with Warren on this. It's, it's, it's junk. Let's keep watching. And, and then you have to insure it during that time and make sure you know, somebody doesn't steal it from you. But it doesn't produce anything. And uh, productive assets, uh, you, may, you can pay too much for a productive asset. But I bought a farm in the 1980s, and, and every year we look at how much it produced, the way soybeans and corn. And at the end of that period, I've still got the farm. And I've gotten some significant income off of it, apartment house, operating business. But uh, if, if you and I buy various cryptocurrencies, they're not, they're not going to multiply. They're not going to be a bunch of rabbits sitting there in front of us. They're just going to sit there. And i got to hope next time you get more excited after I bought it from you, and then maybe I'll get more excited and buy it from you. And actually, we could, we could sit in the house by ourselves, and we could keep running up the price. Between us. But at the end of the time, there's one Bitcoin sitting there, and now we've got to find somebody else. And, and they come to an end. I mean, those, uh, that's a great example. In other words, two people can be in a house and they can keep buying the coin back and forth from each other. <laughs> okay. And it really doesn't matter because it's still an empty coin that's worth nothing. And uh, other than the value that those two put on it. And like I said, Bitcoin's value going up just really is predicated on that there's going to be some sucker that's going to come in and buy it behind you. And, you know, so anyways, uh, I like everything that I'm hearing, Adam. Let's keep going. That's a greater fool theory. That's what you're saying. Hey, well, yeah, it's, 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 it's buying something. The greater fool theory. That's what she said. The greater fool. Who's the greater fool? One gets the money and the other one gets the experience of losing the money. So let's keep going. Because you expect the pool of people who want to buy it because they want to sell it to somebody else will grow. And, and, and you know, it's wonderful because it does create a rising price, does create more buyers and people think I've got to get in on this. And, and it's better if they don't understand it. That's the other thing about not predict if, if you don't understand it, you get much more excited than if you understand it. I mean, if you buy a bond that says you're going to pay you 4% a year, you're not going to get any pleasant surprises. <laughs> See, that's funny what he said. It's kind of fear of missing out, right? People start getting in. Oh, the way it keeps climbing. Oh, I got to jump in. I got to jump in. And uh, like he's, it goes back to the greater fool theory too. But like he said, the, the less you know about it, the more you get excited about it. Because if you did understand that there's nothing there, you would never get excited about it. But the masses are the asses. You can always count on that. The masses are the asses. I say it all the time. And it's completely true. And so all the little guys that jump in are the ones that are most likely to get burned. But uh, let's keep watching. Pay 4% here. But if you, if you, you can have anything you want to imagine. If you just look at something and say, that's magic, you can do it with shark's teeth or seashells or, or anything. And, uh, you know, they did it with tulips in, in, in the 17th century in, in, in Amsterdam. And, and, and they'll do it again. I mean, people, they like to speculate. They like to gamble. And uh, if you can get something, particularly if you have something half plausible going on. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. I want to look that up. He said that in the 17th century, the same scheme was going on with tulips. So, uh, you know, let's, let's, let's take a look at that. going on. Mm -hmm. If you had bought gold in 1942 and you said, we might lose the war, we might have to run off to some other country and, you know, so let's put our assets in gold, you would have less than a penny for every dollar you got from owning stocks. Less than a penny. Now, somebody calls that a store of yeah. value. I mean, I think they're delusionary. Okay. Yeah. So when you see these celebrities 
on TV telling you to buy gold. Just look, at, they're paid to tell you that. It's not that they believe in it. It's not that they have any experience in it. They're just a paid spokesperson. And that's what's unfortunate. There's a lot of influ influencers out there on YouTube that don't know shit. They don't know what they're talking about, but they promote it as if they do. And like I say, the masses are the asses. People get all excited and they want to jump on and they want to be cool. And, you know, these guys uh, drive a fancy car that has nothing to do with the investments that they're referring to, has everything to do with the fools that pay and that they monetize on their YouTube channel. And so, uh, you know, if you're one of these guys that gets caught up, you, you just keep yourself in check, okay? Because you're blowing your seed capital. When you throw money at something like this, you're not going to see shit from it. I mean, that's the, that's the most likely scenario is you're going to lose your ass. But adopt Warren's mindset and my own. Only buy something that's worth more. Bitcoin, <laughs> you're not going to buy it. You're going to buy it for what it's worth that day. It may go up, may go down. Chances are, though, uh, you're buying at the wrong time. Because most people do. That's just how it works. If you adopt the mindset that you're only going to buy something that's worth more, that's your hedge. It's worth more. I'm not going to buy this car unless it's worth more. I'm not going to buy this tool unless it's worth more. In fact, I got a forklift I'm going to buy right now. only need it for a month. I'm going to pay 7500 bucks for this forklift. I'm going to use it for about two months to move some things around. And when I sell it, I'll probably sell it for ten grand because it's worth more than I'm paying for it. Plus, I'll be able to use it in between. That's the kind of mindset you need to adopt. I've been doing this my whole life. Uh, in fact, if you look at some of my old videos, you'll see I bought scissor lift, fire trucks, tons of video equipment, tons of machines, bought them all under market. And I do this while, even while I'm doing real estate, I, but because I have knowledge, I know about machines. I know about certain things. Uh, if I'm looking for a car, then I know about that particular car. Uh, but anyways, always keep that in mind. Never pay full price. And that's your hedge Buy a low market. And let's keep watching more. Uh, Andrew has a question, too. Andrew. Hey, Warren, related to this uh, issue of Bitcoin, you saw that Goldman Sachs just last week announced that they were going to uh, create a, um, effectively a trading operation around cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin in particular. You've been an investor uh, in Goldman. What do you think of their decision to do that? Well, they probably think that lots of people are going to get very excited about it. Well, and uh, maybe already are, but they, they think there's money to be made trading them. Uh, I don't think they're expressing an opinion on the ultimate value. I would be very surprised at the top partners of Goldman are, are, are selling their Goldman stock and putting it into Bitcoin. But, but yeah, I, I want to cover the subject now because my friend Charlie will come on at 8 o'clock and he'll tell me what he will say. Well, that, that's my whole entire point. I do want to ask Charlie about it because I think when he talked about the turds. So listen, they're talking about Charlie Munger, who's uh, awesome. you got to watch Charlie. If he, hopefully he comes up on here. He was referring to this. He, he said if you're trading this, it's like watching other people trading turds and deciding you want to get a piece of that. Well, you're not going to get me to comment on that. <laughs> Hopefully Charlie's not awake. Well, the truth is, people do trade on very crazy things over time. Uh, you know, imagine people selling their homes to buy a tulip in Amsterdam. Uh, if people think they're going to make money the next day, and worse yet, if they think somebody else that they know is going to make money and they aren't going to make money, they, it, it, it just draws people in. You know, I, I, I could whisper something on this program, and, and, and kind of the more silly it was, the more it might react because there's no quantitative limits. If you buy a stock, you say, well, I'll buy it at 15 times earnings, but I won't buy it at 20 times earnings. But when you get into something that doesn't produce anything. There, there's no there's no checkpoints sir. see that's what he said quantitative limits quantitative limits in other words you're going to quantify the value some way you can't do it with bitcoin you can't quantify it. It, it it's because it's nothing there's nothing there you're quantifying value based on some fool paying more for it than you did not a very not a very good foundation there's, there's nothing to reference it to it's just it's gone up so it'll keep going now, I will in terms of cryptocurrencies generally uh, I can say almost with certainty that, that they will come to a bad ending. Now, when it happens or how or anything else, I don't know. But I know this. If I could buy long-term puts, if I could buy a five-year put on every one of the cryptocurrencies, I'd be glad to do it. But I would never short a dime's worth. Have you thought about you know, trading the futures talking, to take a negative position on Bitcoin? No. You would not do that? No. There's no reason. There, there's no and see, that makes sense. The reason he can't take a negative position on Bitcoin because he knows you can count on the masses are the asses. There are fools out there that will buy and run this thing up. But like he said, it's gonna, ultimately it's going to end. I always think about the emperor that wears no clothes. Remember the emperor wears no clothes and everybody caught up and, you know, oh, yeah, it looks amazing. Some people actually saw clothes. Some people are like, well, they're scared to death. The king's going to cut their head off if they don't you know, pretend to see clothes. But it took the honesty of one kid with common sense to come up and say, I don't see anything. He's naked. And really, that's Bitcoin. Bitcoin is nothing there's nothing there and for exactly the reasons that warren's talking about uh, but let's keep watching
reason, I, I get into enough trouble with things I think I know something about. Why in the world should I take a water short position in something I don't know anything about? So, uh, you know, we don't have to know what cocoa beans are going to do or, 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 any, or cryptocurrencies. We just have to focus on eight or ten stocks that businesses, basically, that we think are decent businesses. Have. So that's funny. So like you said, why would I take a chance on something I don't know about? Why wouldn't, you know, he's going to work on something that he does know about. And when he, when I say he, I mean, I think he does know what he's talking about. It's worth nothing. There's nothing there. Okay. Well, I mean, how do you, you're creating a currency and then you're creating it, you're making it more valuable by just somebody coming in and paying more for it than you did. I mean, it's hot potato. It's hot potato, no matter how you look at it. Buying something that you know has value, something tangible that's useful, something that produces an income, right? Something that produces an income every month. That's real estate. That's real estate. You buy a house, you buy a rental, just make it the most simple thing. You buy a rental, somebody pays your rent. Somebody needs a place to live. That Bitcoin ain't worth shit when you need somewhere to live, okay? You, you, you know, to throw your money into that, and I, we got to look up this tulips thing. I got to look, I'm going to do, a, we're going to definitely do a video on that. Uh, I don't know what he's talking about, but I guess 1700, he said people were selling their homes to buy tulips. That's how stupid people are. The masses are the asses. It's been that way for ages. Uh, and really enjoying this. Let's just keep listening. But I do think that, I think what's going on definitely will come to a bad ending. I mean, you've got virtually everybody. I, I have a class, I have 11 schools coming on Friday. The questions will be on Bitcoin, and I won't know the answers. <laughs> Although when we sat down, Warren, you did say, I should have announced that we were getting involved in Bitcoin this morning. Well, that is true. I mean, if I, to, uh, that, that would be much more interesting <laughs> to the audience that, that we were going to issue a whole series of cryptocurrencies tomorrow. But no, we aren't, believe me. And we don't own any. We're not short any. We'll never have a position in them. Capitalization of cryptocurrencies approached that of Berkshire and Apple last year. And clearly, the idea behind crypto will affect conventional banking groups, where Berkshire is a shareholder. You always say you didn't go into too much detail to obtain an understanding on cryptocurrencies. So what factors caused you to say that it's a bubble? Well, generally, non-productive assets <clears throat> remain. You know, if you bought gold at the time of Christ and you figure the compound rate on it, you know, it's, it may be a couple tenths of one percent. Uh, the it, it, it's it essentially is not going to deliver anything other than supposed scarcity. You know. It's funny. I love this. These guys are really, really smart individuals. It's going to be fun to hear what Charlie has to say. Because I only you can only mine so many. But so what? I mean, what, is, what does it produce itself? Uh, you know, the check is a wonderful idea. Just imagine how the world would be without being able to write checks or have wire transfer funds. But it doesn't make the check intrinsically itself worth a lot of money. And if you said you can't use something called check with a little piece of paper, you do something else to transfer money. I, I think that anytime you buy a non-productive asset, uh, you are counting on somebody else later on to buy a non-productive asset because they think they can sell it to somebody for more money. And it's been tried with two of us. And it's a greater fool. You're counting on a greater fool. It's been, tried, it's been tried with various things over time, and it does come to a bad ending. I'm mean, having, you have a hard time, you can, you can think, of, think of raw land. I mean, the Louisiana purchase was, say, $15 million for 800,000 or so square miles of land. In fact, you're sitting on land that came with the Louisiana purchase, and, and uh, so what we pay? We paid 20 bucks a, a square mile, and, uh, you know, 640 acres in a square mile, and you're down to three cents a, or something. So that was a pretty good purchase of an, what was then a non-productive property, but it depends. But, it's very hard. You can buy stamps. Bill Gross got everything, you know, collected a wonderful stamp collection, and it sold for more money in the end. But it's dependent on somebody else wanting to buy, hoping they will sell it for more money, and so on. And in the end, you make your money out of productive assets. If you buy a farm, you, you try to estimate what the crops, what amount per acre of soybeans or corn or whatever may be raised and how much. See, here, this is really so basic and simple. Consider this, like he's talking about, the farm. You buy the farm. You're not going to get rich quick, maybe, but it's going to produce an income. It's going to slowly go up in value. And believe me, there's so many farmers that are so rich today because they, you know, they bought this land for $1,000 an acre and, you know, 40 years goes by and now all of a sudden they want to put a track of homes on it. And now it doesn't produce as much as, you know, in other words, the crop is now real estate. The crop is housing. And, you know, that happens sometimes, you know, you change crops. But uh, and in the end, that's what a lot of these farmers do, you know. And they're getting 60000 an acre for what they paid 1000 an acre, where they used to grow alfalfa or onions. Now they're, you know, people want, people want to live somewhere. And now it's housing is the crop. So let's, let's keep going. I'm anxious to hear what, what uh, Charlie has to say. You have to pay the farmer that farms it for you and what your taxes will be and various things. And you make a conclusion based on what the asset itself will produce over time. And that's an investment. When you buy something because you're hoping tomorrow morning you're going to wake up, you know, and the price will be higher. You know, you need more people coming into it than are leaving. And, and, they, uh, and you can get that, and it will feed on itself. 
for a while and sometimes for a long while and sometimes to extraordinary numbers, but in the end, but they come to bad endings and cryptocurrencies will come to bad endings and along with the fact that there's nothing being produced in the way of value from the asset that, that uh, you also have the problem that it draws in a lot of charlatans and that sort of thing who are trying to create various sorts of exchanges or whatever it may be. It, you know, it, it's something where, where people who are of less than stellar character see an opportunity to... Uh, That's your fake gurus pushing this shit. ...clip people who are trying to get rich because their neighbor's getting rich buying this stuff that neither one of them understands. It will come to a bad ending. Charlie? Well, I like cryptocurrencies a lot less than you do. <laughs> <laughs> And so, to me, it's just dementia. And I think the people who are professional traders that go into trading cryptocurrencies, it, it's, it's just disgusting. It's like somebody else yeah. is trading turds and you decide I can't be left out. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's great. To the extent that this brought, we're being webcast around the world, I hope some of our stuff doesn't translate very well, actually. <laughs> Bitcoin is worthless artificial gold, which if it succeeded would facilitate a lot of illicit activity. Now, that is not something... I think the world. That's funny. Artificial gold. We call that fool's gold, right? Pyrite. Fool's gold. World needs. And the fact that it's clever computer science doesn't mean that it should be widely used and that respectable people should encourage other people to speculate on it. Bitcoin reminds me of Oscar Wilde's definition of fox hunting. The pursuit of the uneatable by the unspeakable. <laughs> well, that sounds better than what I used before. <laughs> <laughs> We, we asked earlier, Charlie, uh, Andrew brought it up with Warren, but... I think it's a scumball activity. Does that better serve you better? Thank you. Yeah, um, we, we asked earlier... I like Charlie. He says it straight. He's very, very, you know, right to the point. ...about Goldman Sachs getting into the business of having a trading desk for Bitcoin. Berkshire Hathaway owns about $2.5 billion of Goldman Sachs. Does it bother you, or does it not surprise you? Just... Well, I don't expect every investment bank to agree with everything I think. They're, they have a lot of animal spirits in investment banking. Bill, Charlie and Warren have weighed in on Bitcoin. Do you own any? Uh, somebody gave me some for my birthday, uh, and then a few years later I thought, hey, I'm going to sell that. So no, uh, there's some really good technology in terms of sharing databases and verifying transactions uh, that is talked about as blockchain. That is a good thing. Bitcoin and ICOs, I agree completely. Uh, it's one of the crazier speculative things where it's not, as, a, as a, an asset class, you're not producing anything. Uh, and so you shouldn't expect it to go up. It's, it's kind of a pure greater fool theory type uh, investment. Um, so, you know, I, I, I agree. I would, I would short it if there was an easy way to do it. So just consider that. Now, you got, you got three extremely successful people on stage here. They've been around a while. Now, are you going to listen to these guys? Or, <laughs> or let's see who else you might listen to. Okay. Maybe you can listen to somebody like me, Kevin. <laughs> I got dog coin or dodge coin. Anyways, what's interesting is the people that are talking the most about Bitcoin are the people with the least experience. So yeah, so look at these guys. Look at these faces. Okay, these guys are young guys. And listen, with youth comes inexperience. Don't listen. <laughs> Don't buy the hype from somebody that's young that stands to make a profit on you, right? Never trust anybody that stands to make a profit on you. Okay, you know, let's just go ahead and rush up here. Let's come into the future because if I notice it keeps changing, 2018, here's 2019. I mean, it's too bad, but, but Bitcoin, it, it's ingenious, and blockchain is important, but Bitcoin has no unique value at all. It doesn't produce anything. You can stare at it all day and a little Bitcoin's come out or anything like that. It's, it's well, he's consistent because that's a year after he said that. He's saying it again. Here, here's 2020. Uh, he gave you some Bitcoin. What's it feel like to be a Bitcoiner? Uh, I, uh, I don't have any Bitcoin. <laughs> you, you don't? No. Okay. No. You don't own Bitcoin? I, I will, no, I do not own one. I don't own any cryptocurrency. I never will. And, uh, <laughs> you know, in, in the end, I, I may start a Warren currency. You know, maybe I can create one and I'll say there's only going to be 21 million of them and you can have a little ledger sheet from me and everything that says you have it. And, and you can have it after I die. And you, but you can't do anything with it except sell it to somebody else. <laughs> and the interesting thing, of course, is that Bitcoin's been out there. So think about it. He's been really consistent, really consistent through these years. This is 20, started in 17, I think. Uh, anyways, basically, like he said, uh, it, it has no value. The only value is, is if somebody else will pay you more for it, <laughs> which is terrible. <laughs> a long time, and people talked about how it would be used in, in various kinds of exchange, but none of our companies are doing business in, in Bitcoin or anything. Uh, uh, Bitcoin has been used, I think, to move around a fair amount of money illegally. So the... the the or maybe in countries the, where you have yeah, a so the, the, the logical move 
from the introduction of Bitcoin is to go short suitcases because the money that was taken in suitcases from one country to another, suitcases will probably fall off in demand. I mean, so you can put that as the economic contribution of, of Bitcoin to the society. Is I don't know this gal's name, but uh, she did a good job, CNBC. Anyway, you did a good job, whoever you are. I, I enjoy her. Uh, I'm not big in stocks at all. I'm a real estate guy only. Uh, although, I mean, I've looked at stocks. I've done some day trading in the past, and to me, I concluded pretty much the same thing. This isn't for me. Well, always uh, a pleasure listening to uh, Charlie Munger and, and uh, Warren Buffett. And uh, this gal did a great job, so good job there. Please take that in, folks. There's just, you know, don't, don't buy into the greater fool. You know, don't, don't get into that game. Don't be the fool. Uh, and that's kind of where most people end up. So, hey, uh, please subscribe to the station if you, uh, my channel. And uh, if you want to know about real estate, that's what I know. <laughs> I've been doing it a long time and I got a long history of success. And I reference all the real estate that I bought. I take you through, I've got about 150,000 uh, square feet of rentals that I own myself and that I manage. You know, I have management companies, but they're mine. And I just started with zero and I made the money by parlaying small deals into bigger deals and bigger, bigger, bigger deals. In other words, it's real estate money success. It's not me making money from YouTube and parlaying it into real estate. It's me actually making money on real estate. And that's what's so important for you. I got a book. You can get it on, it's called Wake Up and Smell the Real Estate. You can get it on Audible. You can get it on um, you know, Amazon has it. You can get a paperback or you can Kindle. You can go read the first few chapters for free right now. Just go click on where you buy these things and uh, you can you can start reading it for free, at least a few chapters. And this is only a 10 or $20 uh, investment. So you're obviously, you know exactly what your loss is going to be if you don't like it. In fact, I think you can probably return my book to Amazon if you don't like it. I think they take everything back. But I don't have a problem with people sending it back. Most people just regret that they didn't read my book earlier. So uh, anyways, that's it. Thanks for watching. Flip Anything USA. Please uh, share, subscribe. Thank you.